How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive part 47. Milling the reverse of stamped support casting to the correct accurate dimension so that the left cab floor plate precisely matches the height of the frames. I milled this component to the correct shape in a previous video but it wasn't part of this series. It was such a useful video that I gave it a name all of its own, how to clean up and machine gunmetal castings. Here's an extract from the video. This supports the reversing lever, which in the design of this type of valve gear has to be very strong. This is where it fits, and I need to both clean this up and machine it accurately. The first thing to do is to clean out the hole in the casting. I'm cleaning up the hole in the casting at this point using a hole cutter in my electric drill, and I must say that I don't recommend doing it this way, because if the drill bit grabs in the hole, it will throw the part about. But gunmetal is a very soft metal, so it's not doing that. And besides, I'm being very gentle with it. It's looking much better than it did five minutes ago. This is a small but important part of the job from an appearance point of view. For this job, this is an essential tool. It's a set square. Both the bolting face to the frames and the larger part that supports the reversing lever need to be at 90 degrees to each other. For this to be at a perfect 90 degrees to the main top plate, I need a datum surface, and this is it I'm making at the moment. That's looking good. Now I turn the part around in the machine vise, with the larger flat surface uppermost. This needs to be exactly at 90 degrees to the part that I've just machined, and I check that using a set square down onto the milling table, and once I was happy that it was at 90 degrees, I could continue the cutting process. I'm using an end mill for this job, it's not a slot drill, it has more cutting surfaces and therefore is not as violent as using a slot drill, which only has two cutting surfaces. And also that's why I'm using this small milling cutter. If I did use a larger cutter, particularly a slot drill, this component could be easily ruined. Don't forget it's only a gunmetal casting and it's clamped into the machine vise by quite a thin part of the casting. I'm brushing away the chippings frequently. If I didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to see what the cutter was doing. I don't know why, but there's something satisfying about using a small end mill on a piece like this. All the lines look like the lines on a nice grass lawn. When grinding or sanding gunmetal castings or any sand castings, you do need to make sure that you're wearing the correct type of PPE, personal protective equipment. This video covers the next stage of the job. When I milled the reverser casting, I left it slightly oversized. And here, when I put the metal plate, which forms one half of the cab floor in position, you can see that it is not level with the frames. It's actually level with the buffer beam, which is slightly above. I used the piece of steel sheet metal to scribe a line on the edge of the casting. Now I just need to mill it to this depth. First of all, though, I need to undo the nylock nuts that are fitted to hold the part in place. These are fitted on the inside of the frames using washers to the Allen caphead bolts that I used. The trouble with these nylock type of locking nuts is that they're quite difficult to remove. You have to turn them with a spanner for much longer than you would have to do if they were standard nuts. I didn't film all of this sequence because most of it looked like this. Here's a bracket once I removed it and as you can see one or two of the holes have been modified. And the reason for that was not because I drilled them in the wrong place, they just match the filed holes in the frames, which by the way were already there and not my doing. Over now to the milling machine, and I have to be very careful with this job. The first thing I'm doing is taking a test cut, a very light test cut across the top. I'm not cutting down to the scribed line, it's well above it. And the current position of this casting in the machine vise is not correct. As you can see, it's removing more metal from the left hand side than the right. In this clip, I'm gently tapping the casting using a nylon faced soft hammer to change its position in the vise. This is actually a good way of doing it and it's more accurate than you think. The milling cutter now takes a little bit more from the right hand side and it removes less metal as it progresses down the original cut until it gets to the end when it doesn't remove any at all. I verified it with the set square and now it's as true as I can possibly get it in the machine vise. Let the milling commence. As I've mentioned before, working with gunmetal is difficult because it's a soft metal 
and if you put too much pressure on it, it bends and moves away from the cutter. I'm also using a really sharp milling cutter. Never use a blunt milling cutter or any kind of tool to cut gunmetal. It needs to be razor sharp, otherwise it just skates over the top of the work. By far the worst metal I've ever cut, apart from Econel, which was very hard, was some alum bronze. And with a blunt tool, you've got no chance. It just skates over the surface and you end up with a bruised appearance and the part is not to the size you want it. So, a quick rule of thumb, when machining soft metals, use sharp tools. I'm removing the chippings frequently when doing this job to make sure that the tool is cutting properly, and indeed it is. I'm now on a pass that went down to the line, so this is the finished dimension. Just the last bit to go. Now all I have to do is bolt the part to the frames and check that it's OK. Once again, I'm using the Allen caphead bolts that will need trimming to length. I'm fitting washers and nylock nuts on the inside. One useful feature of the Barco spanners that I have is you can use them to clamp onto nuts like this. It makes the job quicker than using a small open-ended spanner. This is a 4-inch Barco spanner and here it is clamped to one of the nuts and all I have to do is tighten the Allen bolts from the other side. I haven't fully tightened them though at this stage. I need to make sure that the cab floor half fits perfectly on the frames and also on the bracket. I soon realised that using a soft hammer was a better option than using my fist. I tightened the nuts and bolts that hold the bracket to the frames a little bit more and a final tap with the hammer on the bracket itself made the job perfect. This piece of steel needs fastening to the frames and for that I think I'm going to use steel bar rather than angle. Mainly because black gates don't have any steel angle of the size I require and steel bar is heavier and I can just thread it, it will make the job a whole lot easier. The next part of the job was a little bit messy. To cut all of these bolts to the same length, I used a diamond cutter disc in my Proxon motor tool, the right angled one. And then I gave the entire area a coating of satin black, to avoid any future rust problems in this area on the nuts. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.